I don't know, dude. I actually really like the notch on the new MacBooks. <laughs> Today we are talking about unpopular tech opinions. Hi, my name is Sarah Dichi, rhymes with peachy. Just so you remember that. Thank you so much, Commenteer, for sponsoring this video. Um, oh my gosh, their coffee is so freaking good. I drink it every single morning and I am two coffees deep today. So when I say I am lit for this video, that might be the understatement of the century. I had both a hot coffee and a cold coffee. Oh, it was so good. So more on that later, but I think we just need to hop into this. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, Sarah Peachy out here on the quad. <laughs> it's honestly very triggering to be on a college campus right now as a college dropout. Uh, those were some of the worst years of my life, but hey, people seem to be enjoying themselves today. The first thing I want to talk about is Adobe Creative Cloud. It being a subscription software actually isn't that bad, and I think it's actually worth the price tag. Oh my gosh, I'm about to get roasted okay there is a caveat i think it would so be worth it if it always worked okay and we're gonna get into that side of things too but if you think about it, if you're like a working creative having an entire suite of apps that's probably like 30 plus apps for a price of $50 a month, $70 a month. Um, it, it changes depending on, uh, you know, certain discounts and stuff. I feel like that is an extremely good deal. When I was doing like boring corporate videos or wedding videos, my shooting rate would range from like $100 to $300 a day. And then, you know, edits would be around like $500. And you know, if you stack up enough of those, hey, leaf blower guy, dude, how rude. Do you think they know that we're trying to film a Sarah Peachy YouTube video? Should we tell them? Okay guys, they are walking out. So one job would pay more than what I would need for all of the creative tools that I do my job. Like, that makes sense. Where the problem happens, and this is also what video games are going through right now, is when now there's no incentive to actually release something that is complete, okay? When they can just push an update to everyone's computer, uh, you know, a bug update or little updates here and there, it's almost like they're incentivized to release half-baked products and fix it later. Ah, we'll fix it and post, right? And there's a parallel with this. So that we know this has happened with Premiere, with Photoshop, things right out the gate. They have their conference. Um, they're not as pristine and put together as they once were when they took two years and they released a new CD-ROM, a new box set of apps where they had to be perfect or people would be pissed, right? So there's a lot of this drama with also Halo and some of these games that are coming out where they're releasing bits and pieces of the game. You know, Halo Infinite, it started with multiplayer, but there's not a ton of maps. There still aren't a ton of maps. They didn't have all the game modes and also the campaign release, but they released without a co-op option, which is just crazy. If you, if you roll back time two decades ago, 20 years ago with Halo 1, you know, you bought the one-time purchase, the $60 purchase, and you got all of that. Well, you didn't get multiplayer, but you know where I'm getting that. Halo 2, Halo 3, that's where multiplayer started to be introduced. But when it was just a one-time purchase, there was a lot of pressure on developers and people to get it done and get it done right. There's no, oh, we'll just send you an update over air and it's all good. So let me get back to the unpopular opinion part. Yeah, Adobe out of anyone, not mad paying that subscription just because it, you know, it provides so much value, but at the same time, there's an issue. Do better, people. Maybe we should do a butt reveal. Is there dirt everywhere? Just doing your leg. This is what we get for going outside. I never go outside, people. It's a new world out here. People walking around, you know? Podcast ads suck. I hate them so much. And listen, I know the irony of me saying this. I am a person who makes a living partnering with amazing brands to bring videos for you guys, for your entertainment and knowledge. Shout out to Commenteer. Check out my link, Commenteer. Okay, here's the thing though. Podcasters don't try and the apps don't either. So let me explain. Okay, first problem, the platforms. Second problem, the actual host, okay? So the first problem, it's almost like platforms are making it easier to skip the ads. On Apple Podcasts, you basically just go skip, skip, skip on the 15 second, right? But it's so hard to get the timing done that you're almost like, well, I just, I give up to this ad. I'm gonna listen to this ad. Spotify has made it so easy where they literally make an entire segment as if the ad is like a song to where you can just go skip, skip, skip. I do that all the time. I don't remember the last time I've listened to an ad, you know? The second part, I feel like when it comes to YouTube, People talk directly to the camera and they're like, hey guys, and they have some B-roll and they have this or that. This is podcasters reading at. This video is sponsored by Commentary. You can make 
amazing drinks, hot or cold. And they just, they stare off into a distant to like, you know, a she, or they just read off the ad, which I guess is fine, that's classic radio, right? But I'm like, guys, podcasting, it's so exciting nowadays. Maybe let's add some pep in our step. Make the ads engaging. Someone who does this actually really well is Tim Dillon, he's a comedian. Comedians do a pretty good job. Keeps is the cheapest way to keep your hair on your head. And he almost makes it as a part of his podcast where like, I don't want to skip an ad because what is he going to say? You know, and maybe that's something that uh, brands can be cognizant of. It's like, if you loosen things a little bit, you allow people to be who they are in the podcast, then that'll, that'll make people actually listen to the ads, right? But yeah, I was like, why does no one talk about the fact that no one actually listens to podcast ads? Maybe that's why the CPMs suck so bad. I don't know, podcast ads suck. Shout out to Commenteer for sponsoring this video. Oh my gosh, Commenteer coffee is so good. You know why? Well, it is barista-like quality that is brewed better through science and also their flash frozen process. Through this process, it really locks in the flavor. Trust me, this is like one of the best coffees I've ever tasted ever. The flavor is unreal. And it's also in the 100% curbside recyclable aluminum capsules. Commenteer partners with the best regional specialty coffee roasters. And also it comes right to your door, frozen in the fully curbside recyclable packaging. Just add eight ounces of hot water or pour it over cold water for an iced coffee or milk for a latte. The convenience and high quality flavor allows you to save time and money instead of traveling to a coffee shop for consistently great coffee. And when you think about it, when you get a cup of coffee every morning at that shop, you're getting one giant plastic container. With the pods, they're small and they're also recyclable. Oh, it is so good. There is so much flavor, guys, I'm telling you, it is the best. Shout out to all of my friends in the US. If you still boil your water on the stove, you're gonna get roasted by your UK friends, okay? I've experienced this and I wanna save you guys. So maybe get an electric kettle. It makes making hot coffee, especially when the pods come frozen, just pour that hot water over and you got oh, the world's best cup of coffee. Am I allowed to say that? I'll put an asterisk. Hi, baby. Oh, okay, hold on. I gotta ask John a question. John, <laughs> you've been drinking common tier coffee like, Every morning, we've Actually, collectively, like, you like it? I love it, it's so good. It's, it's so, so smooth. Yeah, ooh, smooth, it is good. We've been drinking a lot. And apparently, Judy has too. Oh Commenteer has a special deal for a limited time just for the peachy fam, that is you guys, and that is $20 off your first purchase plus free shipping. So that is 10 free cups of coffee and over 30% off of your first purchase. Oh my gosh, check out the link in the description below and back to the video. Cheers, Commenteer. Thank you for sponsoring this video. So this next one, yeah, I'm doing it. We're gonna talk about NFTs. My unpopular opinion is I have retracted previous opinions and I am now someone who has zero opinions about NFTs because good Lord, both of y'all are annoying on Twitter. The people who love them, obsessed, and the people who hate them with a crazy passion. You go on Twitter, and it's almost like the people who talk about hating NFTs are now more prominent than the people who are actually doing them. So yeah, I take everything back that I said about NFTs. I'm just not gonna have an opinion and live in peace. We were outside for about an hour and that's enough for me. I'm tired now, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sit right here if that's okay with you guys. Oh yeah, okay, guys, 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 guys. Windows is not that bad, okay? I actually enjoy Windows and I know that I'm probably biased at this point because once you switch operating systems or once you switch tech, once you make a change and you're in the learning process, that's probably when you're the most non-biased because you know what both sides felt like. So if you wanna see that, go back to Sarah's videos in 2017, 2018 when she first switched Windows. I feel like I have some good opinions, Mac first Windows. I'm a Windows person now. Now I'm probably more on the side of what I'm used to which is Windows. But I just made an entire video about people who are switching from Windows to Mac. And I think that's a super helpful video and I think a lot of people are going to be switching to Mac now that you know they have their own chips and Apple Silicon, yay. But as I'm using the MacBook more, I cannot shake the feeling of like, just the automatic snapping, the Windows button, the uh, clipboard, copying and pasting on Windows. And like, dare I say, I actually like Windows and Windows 10 is actually extremely stable. Maybe I'm an old grandma who doesn't update things a lot. If there's a security patch, I'll update it. 
but I have stayed on the same version of Resolve and the same version of Windows for probably maybe like four or five months, which is crazy, but once you get into a flow, why change things? And something to also add on to this, it's adjacent to it, okay? Bring back the desktop computer. Buy desktop computers again, okay? We've been in the age of on the move, right? Not the past year and a half, but like people are obsessed with laptops for good reason. You can be mobile, you can use that power anywhere. I'm not trying to knock that, but the reliability of a desktop computer is unmatched. It is unmatched. I'm not even talking about Windows and Mac anymore. I've just found my experience with an iMac, with my Puget PC, um, just PCs that are just, you know, they have room to cool. They're big guys. They're not worried about shoving a ton of components in a super thin chassis. There was a time where I was running my entire business just on a laptop and I feel like the amount of reliability and you know software not working hardware kind of breaking down on me it I know it's purely anecdotal but like it was an issue and ever since my main computer just changed to a desktop computer my life has been great feels like I'm filming an ad for desktop computers <laughs> my life has been great Let's wrap this up in chat about AirPods. I hate spatial audio and I hate how they automatically connect to other Apple devices. Now, this is such an Apple feature, which I admire their, their chutzpah. Is that a word? I admire their ambition with this, okay? Think about it. You're wearing your wireless AirBuds, you're listening to something on your phone, but then you go to your MacBook and you need to listen to something on your MacBook say your iPad, right? And the AirPods automatically switch in between devices seamlessly. Okay, here's the thing, here's the thing. I would say it works maybe one out of 10 times where it automatically seamlessly switches from your iPad to your phone, to your MacBook. I didn't notice how annoying this feature actually was until I started using the MacBook more. Basically, I'll be on my MacBook, I'll be on a Zoom call, and sometimes I do get on my phone while I'm talking to people, I'm sorry, I'll be scrolling through Twitter, and it comes across a video, and the AirPods switch audio from my MacBook to the thing I should be listening to in the Zoom meeting to my phone. Tragic, terrible, not good. It takes a minute to be like, oh no, okay, I need to disconnect my phone, I need to reconnect to my MacBook. How do I make that never happen again? Because I'm telling you, very rarely does it work right. I will say though, when it does, when it reads your mind and it's like, oh, I need the audio from my phone, it's amazing. But the problem is it works less in your favor than it does in your favor, if that makes sense. So I mentioned this briefly in another video and I was just like, oh, but you can shut it off and I never explained how. So if this is annoying for you guys as well, I'm gonna show you how to actually do it. So you connect to the AirPods that you're connected to, press the little I in Bluetooth settings. And then you go down to this setting here, you basically tap the when last connected to this iPhone. And that'll basically enable you to, hey, if you want your AirPods connected to your MacBook, you just go to the Bluetooth settings and select that AirPod. Or if they were last connected to your iPhone, they're automatically going to connect, but they won't switch in between the other Apple ecosystem, computers, tablets that you have. Yeah, I hate that feature. I hate that feature so much. And I also hate spatial audio. I don't have anything to say about spatial audio, just that it is so annoying. When I'm watching something or I'm listening to something and I like turn my head slightly, I don't want the audio to change. Oh, that's like Apple putting me back in check. Mm -hmm. So those are my unpopular tech opinions. Let me know in the comments down below if you have an unpopular tech opinion. Like for example, do you like the touch bar, the MacBook touch bar? That would be pretty unpopular and I'm gonna fight you in the comments. Just kidding, I won't. Uh, shout out to Commenteer for sponsoring this video. My only opinion on Commenteer is that it's delicious and it's convenient and you should check out my link in the description below. So yeah, let me know. Let's see what's another one. Um, thinking Canon has the best mirrorless cameras out there on the market for video. That would be an unpopular dark opinion, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just poking fun to my Canon, to my Canon homies. It's okay, it's okay. Like, sub, stay peachy. Okay, bye.